So to obtain that negative 1 into a 0 position, I either need to use my second or my third row in order to find a least common multiple between the two. So I'm going to use um, I'm going to use the second row. I'm going to build to 6. So I'm just going to multiply this top row by positive 6. So I end up with 6, negative 6, 30, negative 36. I don't need to multiply my bottom row by anything, but know that we're going to add up because I want to replace that negative 1 with a 0. So 0, 6, negative 16, 28. Adding these together, I have 6, 0, 14, and negative 8. So I'm going to replace my top row now with 6, 0, 14, and negative 8. It's okay that this turned in from a 1 to a 6. We'll come back and uh, manipulate that at the very end. Just as long as our zeros stay where we need them to be for now. The next position that we need to obtain into a zero would be four. The only other option I can use is the middle row, so I want to build between six and four, the least common multiple being 12. Now you can choose any number um, that they have in common, however I find that the least common multiple is the easiest to obtain. So notice that they're both positive, so I'll need to multiply one of them by a negative value. So I'm going to multiply the middle by negative 2 and multiply the bottom by 3. And we're going to end up um, adding down because I want my 0 to be where that 4 position is. When I multiply by negative 2, And then I'll have 0, 12, negative 9, and 33. Adding, I now have 0, 0, 23, and negative 23. Replacing that, the first two stay the same. And now my bottom row now is 0, 0, 23, negative 23. We can now see that I could easily turn this piece into a 1, which might make it easier as I try to manipulate this next value that I need to be a 0 into a zero because when I look the ones that I should focus on are 23 and 14 here that makes it a little difficult so I'm going to divide my bottom row by 23 simplifying it a little when I simplify then I still want my 14 to be a zero and we'll focus on that but it'll be a little easier now with the smaller value Now I know that I'm going to need to multiply and add up. So notice if I were to multiply and add up with my second row and my top row, my zero would disappear. It would become a value. We don't want that. So I'm going to use my bottom row to help with my top row and we're going to add to the top and replace. So I already have a positive 14 so I'm going to need to multiply my bottom row by negative 14 and then add that to my top row to create that zero in that top location. My top is still 6, 0, 14, negative 8. Now I'll have 0, 0, negative 14, positive 14, giving me 6, 0, 0, 6. So my top row is now 6, 0, 
zero six zero six negative sixteen twenty eight and zero zero one negative one. I could now at this time, since I'm not going to be able to use this top row anymore because it's filled with zeros, I can now divide that top row by 6, but I'll, div I'll wait till the end here. I need a 0 in this location where the negative 16 is. So to do that, I'm going to multiply my bottom row by positive 16 since it's r to the opposite value. So my middle row will be 0, 6, negative 16, 28, and my bottom will be 0, 0, 16, negative 16. So I have 0, 6, 0, 12, and we're adding up because we're going to replace that, that middle row. The final step, we need to get our diagonals into ones. So I'm going to divide my top and my middle row by negative 6, or positive 6, excuse me, both by 6, giving me 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 2, and that bottom row we already had done. So based on this, I see that my x value equals 1, my y value is 2, and my z value is negative 1. Writing as a coordinate pair, I have 1, 2, negative 1 as the solution for this system of equations. Let's solve this system using the Gauss-Jordan method. I see that I already have the x's and y's on the left with the constant on the right. So we'll first start off by turning this into an augmented matrix. My first goal is to obtain a 0 in the 3 location. So it looks like I want to multiply my top row by negative 3 and then add down to replace that second row, giving me negative 3, positive 6, negative 6, 3, negative 6, 5, 0, 0, negative 1. Now I have 1, negative 2, 2, 0, 0, negative 1. Oh boy, we have a problem here. I have no value on the left to represent x or y. So right now I have a statement that says there's nothing on the left equals negative 1. We know that that is not a true statement. So this one has no solution. Let's try this 3 by 4. We have all of our variables on the left with our constants on the right hand side. So let's start off by putting it into the augmented matrix. The first value which I need to have a 0 in is this one. It might be easiest to work with that top row by multiplying it by negative 3 and adding down into our second row. 
This would then give us negative 3, negative 6, 3, 0, 3, negative 1, 1, and 6. So 0, negative 7, 4, and 6. The top row stays the same. The middle is the one we are changing. Okay. Now as I look, the next piece that needs to be zero, again I start on the left, working my way from top to bottom, left to right. So when I look at two, I could easily multiply my top row by positive 2 so that I have a negative 2, its opposite value. Multiplying that top row by 2, we have 2, 4, negative 2, 0. Nothing is changing on the bottom. We're adding down to replace that bottom because we need our 0 to be in the negative 2 element spot. Oh, and we see something interesting happen here. Once I added I ended up with zeros along the bottom. And we know that zero certainly does equal zero. That's a true statement. So we can say this one has infinite solutions. There's no more where we can go because we don't have any variables left for the letter Z.